Hello and welcome back to Aeron's World. I'm just going to do a series of random things. One thing I'll say is I've got the canvas there, you know, the backdrop for my pixel art already. And I think I've got enough blocks for it, so I might start filling that in. Um, what I'll probably do is just like a time lapse and just show, show the whole thing be built all in one go. But before I do that, I just want to sort of mess around and do a few other little odd jobs and stuff around the place. Uh, one thing to show you is that I've been changing the path, the pathways a bit here. Um, now I've got like a raised platform here to lead down to there. And then this path also leads off this way. This way I've got uh, reasonably quick access to my tree farms. So there's that one there you saw me build. And this is just, just the tree farm for the other ones. It's very simple. Uh, sand underfoot. Now these trees seem to need more room than the oak trees. Um... Or at least this is what I've been told. So I've sort of spread them out. They've each got sort of a gap of two between each tree. Um, and at least a gap of one before the sides. And, you know, it means that if I need this type of wood, I can chop my way down there. Um, so I've also put a pathway here. Leading up to here. Now, one of the things I'm thinking is, at the moment, those windows stop at that level and the others go all the way down. Um, and I'm actually looking at it thinking that if I made it so all the windows stopped at that level, then I could have a doorway there and there as well. And that just might make, you know, and that just might mean getting around and that is a little easier. Those are very noisy animals. Those are very noisy animals. So, uh, but the other thing I want to do is uh, this map thing. Now, they've changed how maps work now. So they actually sort of work on a set grid pattern. And they're also a different scale. Like, uh, the scale of this one is you can hardly see see the base at all. But now when you make a map at its most basic, um, at the closest scale map, which is what you get when you first make a map, it's one pixel in the real world to one pixel on the map, as far as I know. So maps are 128 by 128. Now that means that if I make a fresh map, we might actually be able to see the layout of my base in it. Um, you can make maps be a higher scale by adding pa paper around them. But, oops. So that's one of the things I want to start with, is make a fresh map. So let's stow this one away. Let me... I just want to check what my volume's at, because it just seems loud. No, that's fine. That's what it normally is. That's what it should be. So, I need iron and redstone to make a compass. One, two, three, four. A bit of redstone. I'm quite low on resources. I've sort of seriously mined out the area under here. What I need to do is um, go set up a serious mining operation some distance away and I will need paper so lots of sugar cane there we go paper so if I make me a compass like so and surround it by paper Then I will get a blank map. Right. On empty map. Now, the tower is more or less the middle of my base, so this is a good place to start this map. I think I have to right hand click it. There we go. Ooh, I don't have to explore. Interesting. Now, you see, it's. It's a grid-based map now. Uh, one, you don't have to explore. And two, it's no longer centered on where you are when you craft it. But as you can see, you can really see uh, see my base there, can't you? So there's the tower that I'm in. Uh, that's the sheep farm. And so that's the tree farm over there. And stuff like that. So... Hmm... 
And I think what we want to do is we will put this up on the wall like... That's maybe too high. Where's the frame gone? Oh. Being annoying. Let's put it there. Where we can see it. And I'm gonna make and I'm gonna make another one now, put it next to it. Okay, so I've got myself three blank maps, but I need to not be standing inside this map when I activate it. Now, why is there another arrow there? Do you see that arrow there? That's that's strange. I'm not quite sure why that arrow is there. Hmm. It just seems to be a permanent arrow on the map. Okay, so I've got to get out of the range of this map. Maybe that's showing where I was standing when the map got created. Now that's interesting. When you go off the edge of the map, a little dot appears, which shows you that you're off in that direction. So now I'm off, off the right-hand side of that map. I want to make a fresh one. Excellent. So that's my base in that direction. Now, strangely, the map is not the way round I've always imagined it in my head. <laughs> now, I'm assuming that east... Yeah, so the map is orientating to north and that, but in my head always, it's, you know, it's sort of rotated sideways than what I was expecting. So now I want to go off the map this way. But I need to stay. No, nope, I need to stay on this grid line. But I want to be off the map southwards. Okay. And I'll make one more map. And now I do one this way, I think. Um, just checking the ground under my feet before I walk. So is this right? I think so. Ah, not much on this one. Okay, so I'm going to stick all these on the wall, and we'll see how they match up and whether or not I want to make some more. Okay, I decided that seeing as um, that way is north, and that's the way the maps are orientated, it's going to be a lot less confusing for me if I actually put them on a wall that's facing north. So, I believe that one goes there. Um, this one goes there. So that one goes there, and that one goes there. Now I've got this, um, because if you're down here, you you know, you can see that one, but you can't see that one. And if I had the other way around, I wouldn't be able to see that one. Putting these um, little half slab podiums here, just so you can walk up to the maps and see them all relatively well. Not brilliantly, but relatively well. So that double arrow on that one, I don't know why that is. And for some reason that bit there hasn't been filled in. Maybe it's because I've never gone there. Maybe that's a chunk that's never even been generated. But that'll do for now. Yes, meow to you too. Now, something I wanted to do with the farm was something I wanted to investigate with the farm. There's quite a few of these guys, isn't there? I don't really need the slime balls, but it gives me a constant trickle of XP. Okay, so currently I'm just growing potatoes and wheat here. 
Now, obviously, uh, once I, if I ever get a carrot, then I'll be able to grow carrots there just as easily. But I want to investigate the possibilities of growing sugarcane here as well. Um, and also cocoa beans, because you can now grow cocoa beans um, on jungle wood. So, which of those? So I think if I, I have to be careful, but I think if I made this jungle wood, like a giant log of jungle wood all the way across here. Oops. Wish you could soundproof glass. There we go. Then clear this row of wheat out. Then I think I can do this all the way along. And when the water flows, it should it should harvest those just as much as anything else. So that's one thing I can do. Um, now the other thing I can do is, like, there's already a bit of water there, but seeing as, seeing as this is the bit that doesn't really get auto-harvested, what if I replaced all of this with water, and then I could put reeds down either side, a complete row. So I want to investigate that, though this is where I really have to be careful, because there's a lot of redstone under there, and if I wash it away, I'm not going to be happy. So I think one of the things I'm actually going to do is quickly make a backup of my world, just in case that happens. Okay. So, um... Putting water here. Got a... Got to check what's under here now. Okay. Eep, eep, eep. Right, see, that's water flowing. But of course, this is part of the mechanism that gets retracted, isn't it? So, I think I have to take a look at this when it's in its open state. Because if I put water somewhere that's going to get exposed and open during the harvest. Now, okay, you see there the cocoa beans harvested. Um, because they weren't weren't ripe, I won't get back any extra ones, but I will get back the ones that I already had. See, I've got the five cocoa beans there. Um, apple. Okay. Let's put away the produce. <laughs> Plenty of stuff now, haven't I? Right. Ah, okay. It gets pulled away at the bottom. But if I had water there, then it's going to just flow down into there, isn't it? But there's maybe nothing stopping water from going behind. Is what I'm thinking. At least, I mean, I wouldn't be able to put any reeds right there and there. And then I think I might also fill this top here with a block, maybe. Um, just some sand, sandstone running in behind. Because it never gets harvested properly anyway. So... Yeah, I think I can do that. So I leave that as... Uh, let me get the water buckets and the sandstone I think I need. Okay, I've grabbed the water and some sandstone. So I think if I replace that with sandstone, seeing as one's going to go on top like that, 
And this is just because I was always getting drops sort of sliding off to the sides and so on. And that way that won't, won't happen. Um, like so. Then I think I can safely dig this one out. Uh, uh, um, tell you what. Let's actually... Pick up the water from there, and then we will dig this out. Yeah, um, good job I did that, because that would have flown the water down there, and then it would have been destruction. And in fact, this is actually a problem, isn't it? Because I can't put any water there. Hmm. There's nothing to put the water on. <laughs> I was too efficient when I built this thing. Oh, that was... Sorry, there's 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 water being held back there. So again, um... Oh, annoying, 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 annoying. Okay. Well, I need that water that's there. Okay, I'm going to go with the, you know, putting sandstone there so drops don't get blocked anymore. All right, so we're safe to put water there. And then we do that. That water is needed to keep this stuff hydrated, of course. So now I've got to do the same thing here, which is remove the water first. I'm not using my shovel because it's too quick and it will probably just eat into that redstone almost instantly. Okay. Um, doesn't quite look as good, but it doesn't look bad. Oh, those sheep are noisy the moment you get close to them. Right. So where could I put the wheat? I mean, the uh, sugarcane reeds, whatever you want to call them. Now, there is a row of water underneath there, but it's too far away. Um, that's going to be where I put... The only place that occurs to me that I might be able to put it is if I made this here all water. Obviously not that bit. Wouldn't be as much sugarcane as I was hoping to... Oh, I just destroyed that redstone. But luckily I've got a looting... a looting pick, so I was able to get the block back. There we go. Right. So this looks like it's going to be relatively safe to... Okay, that was dumb. I should have picked up that water first. Because you never know. Like that, for instance. Why does this one have a gap and that one doesn't? <laughs> wow, I'm getting lucky here. Hmm. I don't see any redstone reason why that wasn't there. I don't think it would cut any wires or mess anything up. So what I want is a lot of... Um, cobblestone so I can line those waterways fully with cobble. I like doing that because that way it's sort of like a warning to me that there's something there that I shouldn't dig out. Okay, so I've got that fully lined now so um, I feel a bit more confident about being able to put the water in. 
So turn that into an infinite and then quickly spread that. So that's still water now. Do the same here. And then we should be able to put the half slabs back on top. Okay, so now I can... Oops. Ah, now is that because it's... Um... Hmm. Is that just because it's um, tilled soil and it doesn't want to be? Yes, it is. Okay, so I just need to until... <laughs> this soil here. Now, I might later get rid of the water first, then dig it out and replace it with sand. Um, not that uh, not that reed or sugarcane grows any faster on sand, but just that way I'll know that that's where that, that, uh, that stuff's meant to go. Okay, so now I think I can... So it's not much... But it's some. Now I've got to work out if there is a way that I could be... Could, I could put another row there if I could think of somewhere else that I could be growing the um, thingy cane. Uh, thingy cane? You know what I meant. Cocoa beans. I suppose... This log here could be made of cocoa beans. Now, these things are <laughs> basically a block that holds back the water. And they get pulled down by a sticky piston. So if those were cocoa bean logs, if those were that rather than that, then I could have cocoa beans... There, 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 and there. That could be reeds, and then and then everything else could be in as well. I think I'll do that. That seems the most, you know, a nice efficient way to, you know, so I can auto harvest all the major crop crop types in one go. Why are you dewatering? That's why you're dewatering. <laughs> I forgot to put that back in. Oh, that was silly of me. Um, I was wondering why I was l losing all my tilled soil. Just making sure it's safe to put the water back. So yeah, I think I'll do that. Okay, so I'm almost ready to fill in the water on the sides here, and I have put sand in rather than uh, what was uh, rather than the dirt to remind me what should be planted there. And I might do something similar in the um, seeing as these bits here are meant to be cocoa beans, I might replace this dirt with just normal sandstone, perhaps. But and it's a big but because it needs testing. The sand that's here is actually hovering over redstone and pistons and stuff. So I kind of need to make sure that it's not going to fall down and cause problems <laughs> when I turn it on and off, because if it does, the water's going to go everywhere. Um, but of course I have to be aware that there is water here and here. Um, that water will go in a straight line, but I feel I need to run a test on this without there being water being being released right over where these things are. Oops, and he says releasing water. Yeah, well, it's... That shouldn't have been, um, that should be that anyway. So yeah, so the cocoa beans are going to be on, the, so there'll be room for 20 cocoa beans. Two rows of 
thingies. Right, let's block that water out. So I think it's going to be quite a, quite a good farm because it's going to be able to grow uh, wheat, carrots, potatoes, reeds and cocoa beans. Which I think is there, um, everything you can actually farm. Okay, so I've gotten rid of the water there and there. So I'm going to flip the lever. I just want to, you know, so long as all the sand stay, stays in place, then we're good. I also want to make sure that everything still works after everything I've been doing. Okay. It looks like the sand is all where it's meant to be. None of the sand has moved or fallen down. So I think we're good. Yep, we're good. So I've just got to fill that with, uh, fill those trenches with water. Half slabs um, on top. Replace the water in these corners. And then re uh, retill the ground and plant. Okay, so I think that's the farm upgraded to be multi-purpose. We've got potatoes growing there, uh, wheat growing there, reeds, and at the moment we don't have many cocoa beans, but they seem to grow pretty quick because they've got three three stages of growth: that one, that one, that, and that one. So this one's ripe. So if I harvest it, I get three cocoa beans from it. Which means I can expand the um, expand the cocoa bean. Hmm. Yes, yes, I got three. So one went there, two go over there. Hmm. So pretty soon, um, each time I harvest, I'll get what is that? That's ten, twenty times three, I'll be getting 60 cocoa beans and lots of wheat, so I might be able to start living on cookies, just like I do in real life. <laughs> um, so I'm relatively happy with that. I have to see what else I can, um, if there's anything else I want to do, you know, before I start doing the pixel art. <laughs> I really like the look of that. The way the sort of window splits around to allow me to have the extra door. Um, I'm trying to decide whether or not I should need to do it everywhere else. If I do, then I'll have to move the map somewhere else. Although that isn't really an issue. But, you know, I mean, I could do it everywhere. But, I don't know, in some ways it seems to be okay that it's... See, on this side it's blocked by the stairs anyway. The stairs are going up straight through there, so it wouldn't work there. Um, maybe it's okay that that side doesn't have it, but there's like a oops, there's like a new f front entrance to the base or to the tower. That looks really good. <laughs> I like it. Um, just have to extend to cobblestone path in. So, I decided to make all the sides of the tower look like this. <clears throat> so, I've got the door there like that now. Uh, the advantage is, is that this stair is no longer poking out in front of a window like it was before. So, um, I thought about putting a door there, but it's a bit too close to that stairway there. And there's a doorway right there, so I don't really think it's needed. So, yeah, that's good. Oh, I need to... um. This needs a proper pathway thing, doesn't it? So let's just quickly do that. Ooh, ooh, okay. Um, that has to stay a smooth stone because otherwise it's going to mess up the look down there. Maybe what I need is um, half slab smooth stones. Just so this thing can have like a a step on the second level. 
Huh. Okay, that looks okay from the outside, but how obvious is that from the inside that that is... Hmm. It's not too obvious. <laughs> of course, now I'm feeling the urge to go around and do the entire ceiling like that, but I really don't want to do that. So, I'm going to see whether or not I can live with that. <laughs> All right, but where's the map, you may be thinking. Well, I moved the map down here. Um, means it's nice and separate. means if I want, I can expand it and make it bigger in the future if I need to add more tiles. We've still got this sort of half step thing so we can see in the middle. Now, one, one thing I've discovered is they don't actually update unless you pick them up. You know, so... Um, you can see there's now a pathway extending all the way out like that, which leads to where the, uh, where the, where the pixel art is going to be, which is there. So I've just been doing that. Yep, I've introduced 45 degree angles to my pathway system. That's quite an innovation. <laughs> Discovered that if you make it uh, four long rather than the uh, four wide rather than the usual three, then visually it seems about the same width. If I sort of demonstrate that here, so the width, the way that looks, and that looks about right. Otherwise it looks far, far too thin. Right. And that ladder just goes to the top of the mountain in case I need the, um, easy access. So starting in this bottom right hand corner going along there, along there to there, these are the blocks I think I need to do the pixel art. Um, it's a total of 800. And seeing as most of it's a light blue, that's what all this ice is for. So I think I might actually sit and do that now. Because that's something relatively brainless that I can do. Which is about right, because it's getting quite late here. There we are. I think it's turned out pretty good. Um, I had a bit of trouble with because um, it's it's based on my um, it's based on my texture, and my texture's got like a slightly darker skin, sort of under the eyes and under the neck and so on. But it didn't quite work on this. So so there it is. The only problem with it is that because that's all made of ice. I can't light it up, which means at night it's not as visible as it would be, not, you know, as it would uh, would nice to, um, as it would be nice to be. <laughs> Sorry, it's very late here now. Um, I mean, I could replace the ice with light blue wool later on once I get loads and loads and loads of it. But you know, in general, though, I think that uh, that, uh, that works very well and. I want to thank the person who came up with the design very well. Unfortunately, I don't, I can't remember what their YouTube name is because they posted this to my Facebook page. 
So, um, if you want to tell me your uh, your YouTube name, I'll definitely you know give you a shout out and a thanks. Put uh, put put like a little plaque up or something with your name on it. Don't know why I'm standing here. I'm likely to attract a creeper or something. Yeah, I like that one. There must be a dark spot around there somewhere. Hopefully he'll burn to death before I get any closer. Oh, not quite. There we go. Hmm. Do I have any torches? I have a torch. <laughs> the only torch I've got is the one I grabbed from there that was melting that block. I think there's a dark spot here. Anyway, right, I want to get to the top of the um, top of the tower, so we can have a look at this. Oh, landed in the middle of my farm. There we go. Oh, oh dear! <laughs> I knocked my clock off the wall. Um. Must be some free inventory space somewhere I can make. Anything I really don't want. Bit of gunpowder. There we go. There we go. Let's put the clock back up. I ender eyed into it so uh, so hard I knocked it off the wall. Right. Let's get up and take a look. Oh yes. <laughs> that looks really good. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a little vain, you know, being a giant picture of me, but that is a really good design. Um, <laughs> even at night, that is nicely visible. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode, I think. Um... I'm not sure whether I've recorded one or two episodes. It's going to be based on how much stuff I've got. <laughs> we got quite a lot accomplished. Lots of little bits and pieces here and there. Although I still haven't fixed the gap in the glass there. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about the next update that's coming. Uh, what they're showing with the redstone stuff. Two things really good. One is a light is a daylight sensor. Which means one of the things I want to do is this thing keeps, this lighthouse keeps jamming. Basically, it stop, stops going around. But if I put a daylight sensor up here, so it turns on um, every night, you know, then it will automatically reset itself. Plus, it will only turn itself on at night, which is when a lighthouse should be on. Uh, the other it, very interesting thing that's coming is um, a hopper, which means it's something you can put over a chest. And when items land on it, they automatically end up in the chest. And there's even talk of them having filters. Sorry, where did he spawn from? Hmm, there's a dark spot there, isn't there? I better grab some torches. So, and there's even talk of having filters on these things. Which means that it might be possible to to set up a, an item sorting system where you could just dump everything in and it will go around on water things, water flows, going over hoppers until it reaches the one that's that's got the filter which will allow it to um allow it to go in. You're not actually on fire, are you? No, it's just an arrow. <laughs> Which is just, you know, wow. You know, to be able to do that in vanilla Minecraft will be fantastic. Um, the eagle eyed amongst you may notice that I no longer have connected textures for the glass. Uh, that's because in order to get Cam Studio working, the mod I use to take the time lapse, um, I had to stop using MC Patcher and sort of and use Optifine instead. And for some reason, Optifine is making stuff look slightly differently. Although one thing I have noticed is it makes the maps better. For some reason, in Optifine, um, 
we can actually sort of see the lava pools and the lava flows and everything. And just, you know, just the maps just seem better defined for some reason. Or at least have more detail. I don't know why that is. But let's just get somewhere where we can see this. <laughs> and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.